What's up everyone, my name is Vincent and today I want to take a look at a few rational equation word problems. So these are the two examples we're going to go through and let's get started. Alright, so take a moment to read through this first question. And the first important piece of information we have is we have the ratio of the number of hours that Joe works to the number of hours that Nicole works was 2 to 3. So this is, let's say, in week 1. So in the first week, the number of hours Joe works to the number of hours that Nicole works is in the ratio of 2 to 3. And one thing you could do, because we don't know exactly how many hours they worked, we could write an x here in place next to 2 and 3, because if we compare 2x over 3x, x over x cancels, bringing us right back to 2 to 3. But by putting this variable x in place, this allows us to later on solve for x, which will tell us the number of hours that they both worked. And then what we're told after this is that this week, so call this week two. So in week two, Joe worked four more hours than last week. So if Joe worked 2x hours, then this week Joe worked 2x plus four hours. And then we're also told that Nicole worked twice as many hours as last week. So we're comparing Joe to Nicole. So Nicole's hours is 3x. So we're going to double that, 2 times 3x. And if we simplify this ratio, this is 2x plus 4. And then 2 times 3x is 6x. So now we're told that this week, the ratio of the hours Joe worked to the number of hours that Nicole worked was 1 to 2. So the stuff that I've underlined here in black tells us that we could set up the ratio now, 2x plus 4 over 6x. And we could set this equal to 1 over 2. Because they're telling us the ratio of the number of hours Joe worked to the number of hours Nicole worked in the next week, week 2, is 1 half. So 2x plus 4 over 6x, we could set equal to a half. So then here, to solve, we're just going to cross multiply. We could do 6x times 1 is 6x. And now this is equal to 2 times 2x plus 4, which we need to put in parentheses just to be careful here because we do need to distribute. So when we work this out, now we have 6x equals 4x plus 8. So then all we have to do is solve for x. This is a simple equation now. So we'll subtract 4x on both sides and we'll write the result up here. We have 2x is equal to 8. Once 4x minus 4x cancels and 6x minus 4x is 2x. Divide both sides by 2 and you have x equals 4. So we'll take this information now and plug it back in. So in this section here we'll write out our final answer. So week 1 and week 2 we have Joe and Nicole. So for week 1, and we'll just kinda separate it over here, we'll have week 1 and week 2. So for week 1, x equals 4, so if we do 2 times 4, that means that Joe worked 8 hours. And if we plug in 4, 3 times 4, Nicole worked 12 hours. So then think about what we said for week 2, that Joe worked 4 more hours the following week. So if Joe worked 8 hours the first week, then in week 2, Joe worked 12 hours, and we were told that Nicole doubled the number of hours that she worked from the previous week. So she went from 12 hours to 24 hours. So one thing we could note here, we were also told that the ratio of the number of hours Joe worked to the number of hours Nicole worked was 1 to 2 in week 2. And if you compare them, like a little check here on the side, would be to compare 12 over 24 without the units, and that reduces to a half. So this checks out. So we can be confident here that these are the specific number of hours Joe and Nicole worked. Okay, so take a moment to read through this second question. And what we have here is that Hank is driving from home to college. And his journey is broken up into two portions. For the first part of the journey, Hank is traveling 15 miles on local roads. So one thing we could do here to model this first part of the question, that Hank traveled 15 miles on local roads, is that we could start off by labeling this line segment 15 miles and then next we're told that Hank drives 90 miles on the highway 
So the next portion here, this is going to be a longer segment. Technically, I should make it six times longer, but because 15 times six is 90, but we don't have to draw this necessarily to scale. This is just to help us set everything up. But we're also told here that on the highway, Hank traveled 30 miles per hour faster than he did on local roads. So if we label Hank's speed as V, then his speed on the highway we could call V plus 30. Because we were told that whatever speed Hank is driving in miles per hour, that he traveled 30 miles per hour faster on the highway than he did on the local roads. So we could label this too. This is local roads and the blue one is highway. But the main question that we have to answer here is if the trip took two hours in total, what was Hank's rate of speed on each part of the trip? Okay, now to answer this question, there's a few things we have to know here, but the major formula is that we have V is equal to D over T, where V is Hank's speed or his rate that he's traveling. And the other terms here, D represents the distance that he travels, and T represents the time that he's traveling. So if we want, we can rearrange this formula. We could also say that V times t is equal to d, and we could also say that t is equal to d over v. So it, as it turns out, this is going to be the one we want to make use of the most. And we're going to also combine that with this information that the total trip took two hours. So if you think about Hank's total trip, well, the total trip is equal to the time that he spends on the local roads plus the time that he spends on the highway. Okay, so this is the concept that we need to build our equation that we're going to solve for our solution here. So now let's think. The total time that Hank is driving is two hours. That's the time the whole trip took. So we have two, and we're going to leave the units out for now, but we're going to put them in at the end. And now let's think about how much time does Hank spend on the local roads. Well, time is equal to the distance that he's traveling on those roads divided by how fast he's driving on those roads. So if we look here, the distance that he's driving is 15 miles divided by the rate that he's traveling on the local roads we said was V. And now we could say plus, and let's think, the amount of time that Hank spends on the highway is equal to the distance that he spends on the highway, which is 90 miles, divided by how fast he's driving on the highway, which we call V plus 30. So then all we have to do to get our solution here is solve this equation. This is our rational equation to solve. Well, if you think about how do we solve a rational equation, we're going to multiply everything by the least common denominator, which is v times v plus 30. So if we look at this equation here, let's go ahead and multiply both sides by v times v plus 30. So we're going to put a bracket around the whole equation. And we'll write our v times v plus 30. And then this is the resulting expression we're going to have. So you'll notice here that all of these terms in the original equation just have an extra v, v plus 30. And what it does is it gets rid of these fractions. v over v cancels in the first fraction. And in the second fraction, v plus 30 over v plus 30 cancels. So the next thing we could do with this here is distribute. And we've got 2v squared plus 60v is equal to, and now if we distribute the 15 in the second equation, on the second, I mean on the right side of the equation, we have 15v plus 450. And then the last term here, well, v plus 30, v plus 30 cancels, so we're only left with 90v. So if we look at this resulting equation, now we have a quadratic. So we're going to want to get everything on one side of the equal sign. And one thing we could do is combine like terms. We have 15v plus 90v. So in the next line, we have 2v squared plus 60v is equal to 105v plus 450. So then to make one side equal 0, we could subtract 105v on both sides. And we could also subtract 450. So on the right side of the equal sign, the 105 V's cancel and the 450 minus 450 cancels. 
and now this is all equal to zero, and we have two v squared, 60 v minus 105 v is minus 45 v, and minus 450 is equal to zero. Now for one like this, you could most likely use technology because these numbers are a bit extreme, but if you had to use the AC method here, the AC method refers to the product of the first term in front of the v squared and the constant at the end, but two times negative 450 is negative 900, and the middle term b is negative 45. So if you have to come up with two numbers that have a product of negative 900 and a sum of negative 45, they would be negative 60 and positive 15. And you could run these through, uh, you could run these through, but I promise they'll check out. So then what we would do with those is we're going to break the middle term, negative 45v, into minus 60v plus 15v. And now we have minus 450 is equal to 0. Now once we get to this step, we could factor by grouping. So we're going to factor the first two terms and the last two terms. And when we take out a 2v from the first two, we're left with v minus 30. If we just divide each term by 2v, this is the leftovers. And for the last two terms, we factor out a 15, and we're also left with v minus 30, which is a good sign because when you factor by grouping, you should have matching binomials left. So now we're going to factor out the v minus 30, and we're going to be left with 2v plus 15. So when we set each of these factors equal to 0 and solve, the first factor is going to give us v is equal to 30. And the second factor is going to give us v equals negative 15 over 2, which we could also call negative 7.5. But if we think about the context of the problem here, we assumed forward motion for this. So we're going to reject the negative solution because we're going to assume that Hank is not driving backwards uh, from home to college. So we're going to go with v equals 30, but now let's plug it back in and see how it fits in the context of the problem. All right, so now if we plug all this information back in, we want to know how fast was Hank driving for each portion of the trip. Well, on the local roads, Hank was driving V miles per hour. So his local speed was 30 miles per hour. So those are the units we're using. And if we plug in to see how fast he was driving on the highway, he was driving V plus 30 miles per hour. So on the highway, if we do 30 plus 30, that tells us that Hank was driving 60 miles per hour. But just to think about something here, if we want to check to see that our answer is definitely good, what we could do is we could recall that equation from before, the v equals d over t. And if we look at the rearrangement of this, we had t is equal to d over v. And if we plug all of this information back in, well, think about if Hank drove for 15 miles at 30 miles per hour, how much time was he driving for on the local roads? And on the local roads, this tells us that Hank was driving 15 miles over 30 miles per hour. Now if we write the units, this is equal to 1 half, and then miles over miles cancels, and then when we do the reciprocal of 1 over hour, it comes up as just half an hour. So now let's apply this concept to his highway driving. If we use the same formula for the highway driving, well, note that he was driving for 90 miles on the highway. And how fast was he driving on the highway? We're claiming 60 miles per hour. And if we do the division here, the units miles over miles cancel. We wind up with the units for hours. And 90 over 60 reduces to 3 over 2, which is an hour and a half. So if we complete this check here, well, note that he's driving for half an hour on the local roads and he's driving for three over two or one and a half hours on the highway which equals two hours so the fact that we have a, con a confirmation here that he was driving for two hours total when we use these given speeds that tells us that our final answers are correct okay well this is going to conclude this video on rational equation word problems if you found this video to be helpful please click the like and subscribe buttons it really helps me grow the channel and if you got any requests topics you want me to cover, just leave the topics in the comments section. And thank you for watching.